it's a tremendous opportunity that God is giving us to come and study His Word and may all of us be encouraged and transformed by the study of the book of Galatians. One or two sentences as way of introduction. Galatians and Paul's letter to the Romans. These two letters are considered as the window to understand Paul. Now, I understand that these two letters are not very easy to understand and people often neglect the main message of these two books, Romans and Galatians. Now, a casual reader of the Bible would be very comfortable with many of the stories or parables of the Gospels, but you see sometimes the shift to the epistles it's difficult. So that is when a study like this will help us where we take time and go through the letter because most probably this is one of the earliest Christian writing that we have. Of all the New Testament, as all of you know here, Matthew's gospel is arranged first, but Matthew is not the first gospel, first book written. It is not even the first gospel written. Paul's letters are written much before the gospels. If you are interested in a timeline, roughly if you draw a timeline, Jesus, cross, crucifixion, ascension, if you put it around AD 30, around AD 30, in the next couple of years, there are no writings. Paul's letters, for example, Galatians, come roughly around AD 49, 49, 50. Dates are debatable. We don't need to fight over dates. I'm giving you a rough idea of how things work. Gospels are written around AD 55, 60, 65, just to get you a timeline. Now, Gospels are written after around 25, 30 years. And here comes one of the first letters first writings by Paul, first Christian writings. So that places a lot of importance to try and understand what was the struggle of the early church. Gospel writers are passionate about presenting the life of Jesus. That is the passion of gospel writers. When you read Matthew's gospel, all of you here would know, if you have read Matthew's gospel at least once, you would know, Matthew is presenting Jesus as the son of David, as the son of Abraham. So the focus of gospel writers are the life and teachings of Jesus. It's revolving around the person Jesus. But when you come to letters, that is when you and I get to realize, oh my word, the early church was like this. So that is very important because the trouble which the early church had, sometimes by mistake we say, we have to go back to the first century. We have to go back to the first century without knowing the struggles of the first century churches. Most of us mean by go back to the first century, Acts 2. Acts 2 where tongues of fire and the wind and speaking in tongues. That is what we expect. But very soon after Acts 2, there were a lot of challenges in the church. There were a lot of misinterpretation. Church leaders, pastors were fighting with other gospel. And sure, first letter Galatians, as I told you, most probably one of the first ever Christian writings is introducing us to such kind of a troublesome environment in one of the early churches. Now, Galatian letter is written to whom? For that, we need a little bit of background. I will not stay too long there, but we need the book of Acts to understand who are these people when we have the title there, Galatians or letter to Galatians, who are these people? For our kind information, it is not one church. It is at least four churches which Paul pioneered in the region of 
Galatia. Galatia is a province, just like you might recall reading about province of Achaia. Corinth is a city in that province, the geographical province where Roman people have divided into several provinces. And Galatian province had many important towns and cities. From the book of Acts, we know at least four places which Paul visited. If you would turn with me to Acts chapter 13 and verse 14. Now when we come to book of Acts, we know from chapter 13 onwards, here starts the first missionary journey of Paul. Chapter 13 and 14 is the first missionary journey of Paul. Chapter 15, you have something called in the New Testament that you would use. If you have the titles, you may see something like the Jerusalem Council, Acts 15. That happened right after the first missionary journey. 15 is the Jerusalem Council. 16, 17, 18 is the second missionary journey. And 19, 20, you have the third missionary journey. These are general informations that you will get it from anywhere. But I will repeat it once again to understand Paul's missionary journey. In Acts chapter 13 and 14, you see the first missionary journey of Paul. And Acts 15 is where there was a council discussing about the Gentile people coming into the church. And 16, 17, 18, chapter 18, the mid of 18, you have the second missionary journey. And chapter 19 and 20 is the third missionary journey. Now, province of Galatia, this place is visited by Paul during his first missionary journey. Look at Acts 13 and verse 14, one of the places in that province. Verse 14, from Perga, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and sat down. So here you see the first place. Most probably, Paul was able to raise a congregation there. Pisidian Antioch is a place in the province of Galatia. Some of your Bibles will have map. If you see that province of Galatia, you would be able to plot this place there. Pisidian Antioch coming in the province of Galatia. And another place is chapter 13 and verse 51. Look at chapter 13 and verse 51. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. This is the second place. These are all places in the province of Galatia. Pisidian Antioch, Iconium, and in chapter 14, verse 8, you see the third place. In Lystra, there was a man who was lame. So the third place. Lystra and the fourth place in chapter 14 verses 19 to 21 you see another place Derbe so when we say Paul's letter to Galatians it is not to one congregation like this at least to four congregation which Paul founded during his first missionary journey now the letter is written around now that is a matter of when you search, advanced searching and all, you may get to read a lot of things. But I tend to believe, after reading quite a bit about this, after he had finished the first missionary journey, listen carefully, after he had finished the first missionary journey, 47, 48, 49 AD, first missionary journey, he is on his way to Jerusalem. That is Acts 15. He's on his way to Jerusalem. He knows there are a lot of trouble that need to be solved in Jerusalem council. But on his way, he is done with pioneering at least four congregation. He is on his way to Jerusalem council. In between, he came to know that the church which he pioneered in Pisidian Antioch, in Iconium, in Lystra, in Derbe, in all these places, there are huge confusion. Now, we should not be surprised by the confusion that we see in Christendom today. It was there from the beginning. Confusion. Now, this Bible classes would help us 
to get a grasp on the truth of the gospel. Confusions are Satan's tactics always. And Paul, look at somebody like Paul. He is on his way to Jerusalem. He can wait. He can wait. He can think in his mind, yeah, I pioneered these churches. Confusion is there. It's okay. Let me go do this counsel first and maybe then write a letter. He's not doing that. Before he got to Jerusalem, that means if you are opening your acts there, in between 14 and 15 chapter, somewhere around AD 49, this letter is written. That's why we say this is one of the first letters written by Paul, just before the Jerusalem council. And historical data would support Jerusalem council happened around AD 50, and this happened just before that, AD 49. Letter is addressing the issue of, that is a big, big discovery. That's going to be a big discovery. What was the issue in these churches? What is that confusion? Paul's message was plain and clear about gospel, about Jesus, about cross, all of that. Right after he left the place, if you look at Galatians 1 and verse 6, Look at this verse, the intensity there. People who study Paul's letter systematically, they would say, Galatians is the most polemical letter written by Paul. In the sense of arguments, in the sense of defending himself. This is the most polemical letter ever written by Paul. You see the intensity of that. Maybe before coming to verse 6, I'm inviting you to look at chapter 1, verse 1. Look at chapter 1 and verse 1. Have you seen any other letter beginning like this? Look at chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, sent not from men, nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ. When you have to say something like this, when you read Galatians and when you compare other letters, you may even think, is it by the same person? Because in other places you would say, Paul the apostle, along with Sosthenes, along with Timothy, writing to you. And also he would say, thanks be to God. Here, no thanksgiving. This is the only letter where you see no thanks. Straight away, chapter 1, verse 1 itself, I am not sent by anybody. Paul, an apostle, not sent by men, nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ. You see the intensity of it. In 2020, get ready for something like this. When you see the word of God distorted, when you see the word of God perverted, diluted, what is our response? When I was meditating upon this verse, I was challenged again. What a man, Apostle Paul. He is not satisfied by looking at, yeah, God has been faithful in my first missionary journey. I am able to establish four congregation. Yeah, there are confusion, just like you have it in any other place. He is not that kind of a man. He is taking things very seriously, immediately addressing. And what is the issue here? Look at verse 6. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. Mark these words, grace of Christ. And are turning to a different gospel. What is the issue? When you read chapter 1 verse 6, we may conclude the issue is another gospel. But that issue for us to understand a little bit more, the fruit of that other gospel is in chapter 3 verse 28. For me, 328, if you are able to understand 328, you understood Galatian letter. 328 in the middle of this letter is capturing the message of this letter. What is the issue? Issue is 328 will tell us what is the issue. Look at that. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The issue of Galatian letter is disunity. That is the issue. It is easy to be caught up with one or two verses in chapter 2 by saying justification by faith is the main issue. But I would say 
Paul is bringing justification by faith to answer this problem. The problem is there are divisions. And you look at Romans, as I told you, these are the two heavy letters of Paul. As compared to Thessalonians or Corinthians or Philippians, this Romans and Galatians are like pillars. Again, what is the issue in Romans? The same issue. When you come to chapter 14 of Romans, accept one another. Disunity was like a virus in the early church. And apostles were not blinding their eyes towards this. They were not saying, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. Galatian people are filled with the Holy Spirit. That's enough. God will reveal it to them in the course of time. No, they were restless. They were standing and saying, you cannot go on like this. You are leaving Christ. When we go on further, you would understand in detail of what I am trying to say. Disunity surfaced after Paul left. Here are Jewish people and Gentiles in the same congregation. We don't have that kind of an issue, but we have similar kind of issues in our churches. In the first century, when Paul pioneered this church, the main issue was, here are Jewish people who claim themselves to be heirs of Abraham, descendants of Abraham, because they have three identity markers. Every Jew will boast about it. It says in the traditions, when you read outside of the New Testament history, a Jewish man would say prayer every day, Lord, thank you that I am a Jew, not Gentile. That was the kind of prejudice. That was the kind of exclusivism which they had circumcision they observed special days sabbath food laws these three things because they observed these things their pride their prejudice you can only imagine in that congregation which paul established i will not be surprised if a jew would get up and say Praise the Lord that Paul is sent our way, but thank God that I am a Jew. Thank God that Mosaic law was given to us. Thank God that we are people of circumcision. Thank God that we have dietary laws. You know whose head would go down? Gentiles. Half of the congregation is Gentiles. Gentiles would drop their head. Wow, we cannot say anything back. Here is our big boss, big boss Jewish people, Gentile conflict. This is the issue, the issue of disunity. Moving further, Paul and Galatians, look at the relationship that Paul had with them. Why we are discussing it? We are discussing it because who are the people who are possibly would be led astray? Not bad people. Sometimes innocent people. People who are very genuine. Last week also I have encountered somebody like that. Very genuine. Very genuine. Very dedicated to study God's word. But off late I see a trend. It's another, another track altogether. Deception happens to innocent people. Paul and Galatian relationship will tell you that. People in Galatia, they welcomed Paul. You look at chapter 4, verse 14. Amazing bunch of people. You will not see a congregation like this. Acts 13, 14 congregation. They stand out. They are genuine guys. Look at 4, 14. Maybe we'll read from verse 13. As you know, it was because of an illness that I first preached the gospel to you. Difficult to understand. What is that? Because of an illness I preached? Difficult to understand. So the best translation there is, in place of because, the Greek word can also mean in spite of. So that's the best way to understand. In spite of. That itself will go against many of the popular understanding of gospel preachers. Heralds of the good news. Paul was sick in his body. 
how we will tally that with modern day preachers who would say if you are the temple of the living god no sickness has place in your body you just need to show this 413 apostle paul in the midst of sickness as you know he is appealing to them he has just left them acts 13 14 he's saying as you know it was in spite of an illness i was struggling and when you study history most probably the problem was with his eyes because in other letters also he says writing in bold letters big letters struggle with his eyes later on also that would get clarity in the coming verse so in in spite of his illness he preached the gospel to them and verse 14 and even though my illness was a trial to you what is that i want to pause there because understand this congregation when they saw paul they did not feel like accepting the message because you cannot look at paul and then wow how glorious is christ maybe you look at his face and then oh my pus formed all around or something like that it was a trial in other letters like corinthian letter paul says my gospel is veiled to people of the world when they look at paul it's veiled you don't see any glory in dressing or in face and it's not appealing if paul was standing here today it'll be scandalous i'd say it will be scandalous the very personality itself will shake us oh is this an apostle it doesn't seem to be one especially by comparing him with the modern day apostles where people insist on one the title in front of the name apostle apostle look at apostle paul sick in his body and he's saying my illness was a trial to you meaning what i told about jesus it's glorious but when you look at me you don't feel like accepting this message maybe some of us will go through that in 2020 where we know the truth of the gospel we believed in jesus but things are not going right with us and it will demoralize us how will i go and share to somebody else when i have sickness in my body how will i go and share to somebody that jesus will take care of you when i myself i am in debt I, let me tell you this is the beauty of the gospel paul was like a scandalous person he was becoming like a trial to them will you believe gospel or not physical eyes you look at paul they would say hmm, unimpressive but if you can see beyond the message see that itself maybe one more verse i want to read here because we are talking about it let us talk in detail about paul's experience in corinthian city chapter 2 verse 4 first corinthians 2 4 which again sometimes is misinterpreted we have the picture of apostle paul going maybe singing crush the devil amen and no devil can stand in front of me these days there are a lot of songs that gives you that feel you cannot stand in front of me way maker miracle worker promise keeper paul would be singing that but you look at him the way is not made he's sick and here first corinthians 2 4 sometimes we misinterpret that verse if you don't have the full picture in your mind look at 2 4 my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of the spirit's power what do you mean by that popular preachers would say that demonstration of spirit power is about miracles it's not limited to miracles it is about transforming power of the gospel my words were not with wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of spirit power meaning when paul preached the gospel lives were transformed despite of him you look at him you will not accept the gospel but paul preached and lives were transformed that is the meaning of that coming back coming back people in galatia despite of paul's illness you look at that word 
verse uh, 14 and even though my illness was a trial to you you did not treat me with contempt or scorn instead you welcomed me so what did people in galatia do people in galatia welcomed paul despite of his illness they were an amazing bunch of people and instead you welcome me as if i were an angel of god and verse 15 the illness with the eyes is getting confirmed in verse 15 look at verse 15 where then is your blessing of me now i can testify that if you could have done so you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me so these are not bad people they were willing to do anything for paul that's why i told you good people are sometimes deceived it's not necessarily people who don't read bible who don't go to church sometimes the so-called good they are there for bible class they are there for fasting prayer they're reading bible they can be potential candidates of deception if you're not careful people in galatia not only welcomed paul people in galatia if you look at one nine they accepted the gospel look at chapter one verse nine as we have already said so now i say again if anybody is preaching to you a gospel other than what you accepted so look at the qualities of these people they welcomed paul they accepted the gospel and this you have to understand in the context of first corinthians 118 what does first corinthians 118 say message of the cross is foolishness to the people who are perishing it is in that context when paul got up and said believe in jesus he was hung on the cross for you they said i believe when it was sounding foolishness for others this are a group of people who exercise their faith they said we want that jesus we want that crucified messiah they are a group of people who are very genuine who exercise their faith people in galatia welcomed paul people in galatia accepted the message and the third thing people in galatia if you look at chapter 3 and verse 2 look at chapter 3 verse 2 i would like to learn just one thing from you did you did you receive the spirit people in galatia received holy spirit now they are not casual christians that's what i meant to say all this why they are serious people they are not people who came to the church to get some um, no sickness healed on deliverance and things like that no they accepted the message they are filled with the holy spirit and paul is not saying it was another spirit it is genuine reception of the holy spirit 100 marks out of 100 100 and uh, Verse 2 and coming down to verse 4. Have you experienced so much in vain? Look at that. These are people who not only clapped and had some ecstatic experience. They are people who received the Spirit and experienced the Holy Spirit in every walks of their life. Now I am just holding a signboard here. The first sword Bible class. May this make us a little more humble in 2020. Let none of us develop an attitude. Devil, you try to deceive me, you cannot do that with me. You try with others, not me. Maybe that is a sign that you are already deceived. That's what I think. Because Paul says to the people who think that they are standing be careful that you will not fall i don't know whether this is a prophetic bible class but all of us be more humble trust the lord we cannot discern the schemes of the devil by our knowledge of scripture alone we need holy spirit knowledge of scripture discernment to know the schemes of the devil Otherwise, we end up constructing a wall thinking that we are doing very well. But at the end, we discover we are in a prison. We cannot come out of it. That is possible with good Christians. 
church-going people. Now, nature of this false teaching. When we are looking at this nature of false teaching, it is a message to us also. It's not only to know about how they had that problem. It's happening even today. Nature of false teaching, it's common across injuries. It's like a universal problem. Wherever you see this false teaching coming in, there are two, three trites that's common. And number one is, if you look at chapter 1 verse 9, there is a word used by Paul there. How do you characterize this other gospel? Look at 1 and verse, verse 7. 1, 7. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion. This is the mark of false teaching. Confusion. If you read a book or listen to a sermon and it's full confusion. You were doing well. Let's say you have been a Christian and you have studied scripture and... You knew scripture, you had the infilling of the Holy Spirit, but all of a sudden you heard something and it's full confusion. That is a mark of false teaching around the corner. That is what happened to Galatian people because Paul says in chapter 5 and verse 7, look at chapter 5, 7, you were running a good race. For Paul to say that about his congregation, it's commendable. Paul is looking at them and saying, people, you were running a good race. You welcomed me. You accepted the gospel. You were running well. Who cut in on you? It's, the, it's like you are running. And in between somebody came. They were running well. And who cut into? That is the scenario with confusion. And the same word is used in 510 as well. Look at 510. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. One who is throwing you into confusion. So beware of confusion in 2020. Beware. When something confuses you, go back to God's word. Go back to God's word. You will get clarity in the word of God. Then talk about it to some worldly people and talk about it to some people who are not scripturally oriented in their thinking, you will find yourself in more mess. Go back to God's word. It can happen. Being in the city of Bangalore, you know, we have to be very careful because first century, when Paul was alive, when Paul was around, these things were happening. Confusion. All the more today. And city of Bangalore is not spared. None of us are immune to something like this. Confusion. What is the confusion? What is the confusion here? How the false teachers, how did they penetrate in? For me, that is a mystery. Because Paul was somebody who would educate them in God's word. How it so happened that after he left, immediately they came and confused the people. Is it possible? As I told you earlier, we may think that nobody can deceive us with all the knowledge that we have. How did it happen to Galatian people? Paul was their pastor and one six says, you're so quickly deserting. How did it happen? You know what is the confusion? The false teachers came and taught them you believed in Jesus. You believed in the cross. You have the Holy Spirit. That is not enough. There is a higher level of spirituality. That was the confusion. Greater heights. Spiritual heights are there. In order to get the full blessing of God. You have to become like a Jew first. Then you will experience lot of deliverance in your life. Is it appealing? Of course it is. Is it there these days? Of course it is there. I've heard in many places where people are confused in similar sort of thing. Where you tell the people that you are reading scripture, believing in Jesus, 
no 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 there is another realm what is another realm in another realm there is no scripture in that other realm it's only revelation and what is this revelation it is the revelation that the preacher gets it is between him and god you won't be surprised i guess if i say some revelations that people claim these days i just went and met elijah and i'm coming wow look at our pastor that is the kind of extreme we are seeing today in india it was there it was there in the first century when false teachers penetrate the congregation and say hey you are baptized you are filled with the holy spirit but there is a greater height greater height come up come up always be careful when somebody say come up you should think twice where 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 should i come up don't go up so much or don't go down so much that you cannot come out don't go up so much that you lose your foundation at the end that is what happened in galatian church let me tell you some things there with regard to this confusion when we are enticed by provocative books on new age spirituality be very careful i felt like telling you this you may be a good believer you may be a good believer church going person and you might have taken time today sacrificially to come here to study god's word be very careful when somebody introduces a book to you have you read this book for me my life is transformed be careful be careful any other book that you read other than this have discernment especially new age movement books it's like a poison which comes in you often have that poison then this will have no effect in your life six ways of happy married life pick it up start reading it and then you want a second dose you go for that and then five ways to rise above work pressure something like that I'm not saying don't read anything I'm not saying that I'm only saying be very careful have discernment in 2020 when you pick up a book maybe it's okay to pray lord guide me to the truth guide me to the truth I don't want to be deceived by another stuff which is so appealing and attractive and there might be testimonies also here who are coming to deceive these people jewish people jewish people are coming and telling them you people gentiles we have abraham as the father we have all abraham's blessing you are not getting blessing for you to get blessing what you should do you should get circumcision you should observe special days you should observe dietary laws you become a jew then your life will change I know it's a bible class but let me tell you this message from the lord you don't need to do anything extra to get the favor of god you accepted jesus in your life christ is more than enough for you what you need is not another book what you need is not another lecture from a man who doesn't follow christ what you need is word christ that reality that is my prayer for me personally in 2020 lord i want to grow in that relationship with you in prayer in meditation because in that relationship i have all what i want christ is enough the sufficiency of christ but people are confused in galatian congregation because they are shown attractive things come up abraham's blessing is waiting if you want abraham's blessing you have to become abraham's descendant how you become abraham's descendant you have to go through this identity markers confusion not every quest for spirituality is a quest for god mark it somewhere my dear people of god 
not every quest for spirituality is a quest for god we should check ourselves when we are studying this great people galatian people but they were deceived when attractive things were presented and not in unspiritual way in spiritual way and the second nature that i see with false teaching first is confusion second is distortion always if somebody come up here or in television or anywhere if they are closing their scripture if they are saying i'm not preaching from bible i have something else to say then all of us seated here would say i don't want to listen to this guy but the problem is false teaching in the first century and now it is distortion of the truth meaning it will have an appearance of the truth you look at chapter 1 and verse 6 I am astonished that you are so quickly desert in one you call grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. You mark that word different gospel? Meaning different, but it looks almost the same. That is the problem. False teaching, otherwise Galatian people would never have given themselves into it. It had all the appearance of true gospel. 2 Corinthians 11 also, Paul warned this. Second Corinthians eleven verse four: For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, and the third one is, or a different gospel from the one you accepted. So this was a big problem in the early church. It's not only problem with Galatian church, Corinthian church also problem, because gospel is preached. true gospel is preached somebody else come up with a little modification it has the appearance here distortion is such that christ is not removed from the gospel cross is not removed from the gospel holy spirit is not removed from the gospel if this three this three is like pillar you build your christian life on christ cross holy spirit in galatian church people false teachers did not come and say destroy these pillars let's have another three no they said you have this three but on top of this have this also gospel today these days also gospel is distorted people preach from bible but it is selected verses without looking at the previous verse following verse it may sound very appealing but in 2020 let me tell you my dear people of god stay humble whenever you listen to a preacher ask the lord lord i don't want to be deceived by him especially television preachers especially people who use youtube and stuff where you google and you want to find resources about it be very 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 careful that is what galatian letter teaches us deception is around the corner truth is distorted diluted and the third thing that i see here is it's a common nature that you see with false teaching there will be confusion there will be distortion same scripture is opened and said something new third is even today also i see this it's all because of dishonest gain nature of false teaching is like that it is for the personal gain that people are doing it we should be able to have discernment why is he doing that why is he preaching another gospel it is because personal gain is the motive in galatian church galatian congregation two verses quickly 417 i'll just read that verse and move to the most important part paul's response quickly 417 those people are zealous to win you over but for no good meaning here is a group of people they want to take this bunch away from paul they want to take this bunch away from christ though christ is there come further 
Why, why, why? What they want is, look at that, what they want is to alienate you from us. Paul is able to see clearly. This is why they are doing it. There is a selfish ambition here. There is a dishonest gain here. They want you to be alienated from us so that you may have zeal for them. Be very careful, my dear people of God. I've seen people like that even today, 21st century. There are people who follow individuals. No matter what he says, that is truth. There are people like that, even in the city of Bangalore. Those people are candidates for deception. Because false teachers have always this tendency. They want to get a people after them. They will use their words in such a way, manipulate the crowd. At the end of the day, it is about how many followers I have. Don't be deceived by speakers, preachers, miracle workers who are getting a gathering. The moment when they are going astray from the truth, no matter miracle happens also, take a step backwards. Don't get excited because... When Paul preached, the Berean Christians, you know what did they do in Acts? The Berean Christians were of no more noble people than of Thessalonians. They searched the scriptures to see whether what Paul said was true or not. That is the kind of preparation needed in the last days to keep yourself away from deception. No matter who preaches, search it. Is it in line with the scripture? Whether he says X or Y, that doesn't matter. Now look at Paul's response. We're coming to the heart of this class. What we discuss so far is, here is a lovely bunch of people. Nobody would have guessed these people will be deceived. But they are deceived. They are deceived by an appealing, attractive message that brought confusion. And dishonest gain, distortion, all that. Look at Paul's response. How is Paul going to tackle it? For me, I put just one word there. He is intolerant. He cannot tolerate this. When something is added to the gospel, when it is a gospel issue, not personal issue, if somebody is criticizing Paul, he will not go to this extent. We have to be very careful with that. Sometimes we go to any extent when we are criticized. If somebody criticizes me, then I will write on the Facebook or we go to any extent. Maybe file a court case. If Paul is attacked personally, he will not go to this extent. When gospel is attacked, what is gospel? In what way is it attacked? Paul preached... In order to be saved, you are saved by faith. You put your faith in Jesus, you are saved. These people are coming and saying, faith in Jesus, plus you do this, this, this. Paul is saying, look at the way he responds. 1-8, one 1-8, eight, one eight, when I read 1-8, I see that man in front of me. It's like that for me, Apostle Paul. Look at 1-8. But even if we... I love that. Even if we or an angel from heaven, and you know in Jewish custom and tradition, angels have got big prominence. Paul is saying, even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. It is that whatever you can think of this is, I would say Paul is looking at when he's writing it, this is what I want to say. I don't have anything else to say. This is the last word. It's like that. The feel of it is like that. Let them be under God's curse. Now we have to be very careful about the purity to be witnesses in last days of the gospel, true gospel. What is the kind of attitude that comes in your mind when you are listening to this now? When gospel is attacked, when people are preaching other gospel, for example, prosperity gospel, 
when people say come to jesus come to jesus jesus will wipe your tears jesus will give you a mercedes benz and you will be the biggest millionaire in bangalore and you sit there and what is the attitude yeah it doesn't bother me let him say is that your attitude or in 2020 you will take extra steps maybe in the first phase to educate your own family educate your own family have a bible class when you have family prayer otherwise deception is around the corner paul is saying exposing them he is not having a mild approach he is on target and what is the test of gospel even today what is the test of gospel two things what is the nature of the gospel priest what is the origin of the gospel this too whoever preaches gospel whoever preaches gospel in the 21st century also if you are able to see these two things you are okay you are on track what is the nature of that gospel is that gospel addressing some feelings some earthly things or is it addressing the real issue of humankind that is the nature of the gospel is that gospel worldly earthly or is it spiritual now origin when you listen to a gospel message it should not be originating from the preacher because paul says in verse 12 look at verse 12 i did not receive it from any man what is it in the previous verse it is about gospel paul is saying i did not receive it from any man nor was i taught it rather i received it by revelation from jesus christ now you cannot change this source of gospel is jesus christ nature of gospel is spiritual thing this two checkpoints be very careful you can discern when you have a humble heart and word of god spirit of god you will be able to discern today this is false because the origin of the gospel is not matching with the apostle gospel with the gospel with the apostles preached and the nature of gospel it seems it is very earthly then you can write that off it is not true gospel listen to what i'm saying now true love cares enough to confront true love have you confronted your friend when he speaks another gospel have you confronted or you are a person who is like yeah i have nothing to do with that let him believe that at some day god will reveal it to them that's a very dangerous approach true love cares enough to confront as proverbs 27 5 and 6 says better is open rebuke than hidden love wounds from a friend can be trusted but an enemy multiplies kisses many preachers make people very comfortable but in 2020 my dream is lord when i sit in a congregation confront me with god's word show me lord where i am wrong and in chapter 2 the extent to which paul is going he is not only saying let them be under god's curse he is giving practical example look at chapter 2 and verse 14 practical example of to what extent he goes you know what he says in 214 when i saw that they were not acting who is this they when barnabas and peter when they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel i said to cephas and you have to imagine in your mind here is a junior paul is junior compared to whom cephas he is like a bishop he is senior in ministry but paul is saying when i saw that they were not acting in line with the truth of the gospel what did paul do i said to cephas in front of them all i said to them you are a Jew, yet you live like a Gentile, are not like a Jew. How is it then you force Gentiles to follow? You see, he is very confronting. 
he is not a person who tolerate the other gospel the other stuff he confronts and one thing that i gather here which challenge me is 214 and placing 18 together cephas you are great man but it looks like paul has no respect when it comes to you violating the truth of the gospel and the same thing is there in chapter 26 also look at chapter 26 the language there as for those who were held in high esteem paul is referring to the big people in jerusalem as for those who were held in high esteem whatever they were makes no difference to me god does not show favoritism what kind of a man he is because he is driven by truth he is driven by love love confronts truth is not something that you can keep to yourself it is always confronting in nature and what paul says is when we gather these three verses 1 8 2 6 and 2 14 even paul's apostolic authority is only valid as long as he is faithful to the true gospel think about it paul's apostolic authority is valid only if he preaches the true gospel if he doesn't preach the true gospel his apostolic authority is not valid that is why he put himself there in 18 if we or any other person in other words paul puts himself under the gospel in colossians also you read that beautiful verse colossian 123 we are servants of the gospel but these days you see so many preachers gospel is their servant they play with the message they get up and distort it paul is saying i am a servant of the gospel gospel is above me i cannot play with it if i play with it then i am not an authoritative minister of god he gives that kind of a importance to the message of the gospel i am challenging you all 2020 wake up in your workplace in your family stand for the truth truth of the gospel when you see a diversion don't be a person who will chalega attitude no correct people confront people with scriptures a, another beautiful sentence that comes from a godly man the outward person of the messenger does not validate his message the outward person of the messenger does not validate his message rather the nature of the message what is he preaching nature of the message that validates the messenger may god give us new eyesight spiritual discernment to evaluate the trends you may be a very genuine person innocent person sitting here today i want to learn i want to grow telling you all pursuit of spirituality will not take you to god there are several tendency and trends be very careful mark the boundary with scripture if you hear a person saying strange revelation don't give yourself into it scan it through the apostles scan it through jesus paul is intolerant when it comes to the other gospel true servants of christ will not win popularity never will not win popularity they will gather a great number of teachers to say what their reaching ears want to hear paul will never find himself in that large group last days there are people who want to hear itching ears they want to hear lovely things and here are preachers who domesticate the gospel and present it to them they will say wow wonderful don't play with gospel after all gospel is about jesus coming to rescue you redeem you adopt you in a new family it's spiritual in its nature it's not material materially driven stuff it is spiritual in its scope one more thing and we will wind up paul is intolerant you may get a 
feel of when i said intolerant paul confronting peter paul confronting apostles you may get a picture of oh my god i don't want to be around a person like paul because he will be confronting you left and right and so arrogant it looks like no 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 wait a minute you read the letter throughout you get another picture of paul his response is not only confronting intolerant he is burdensome chapter 419 here is the truth if you are burdened like paul you have all the right to confront that is the deal if you are burdened like paul you have all the right i have all the right to confront what is the burden what is the extent of burden why is paul saying paul saying in chapter 3 1 i always read with a smile you foolish galatians if a pastor address crowd like that next sunday it will be half of the crowd or the pastor will have to apologize but paul no apology you foolish galatians whatever you are make no difference to me how can he say all this there is something else coming in chapter 4 verse 19 look at 419 my dear children not only you foolish galatians my dear children for whom i am again in the pains of child birth until christ is formed in you this is paul this is paul in paul you are not seeing an arrogant unsubmissive leader in paul you are seeing somebody who is true to the gospel and who is having pains of child birth meaning so burdened to see people grow in christ may this be our attitude this bible study may it not create another sense of pride in us may it keep us more humble lord i don't want to be deceived give me that burden when i see people preaching another gospel with burden because all the sheep are going to be led astray with that burden and pain let me confront in other words in ephesian it is beautiful ephesian letter speak the truth in love speak the truth in love may we be driven by truth may we not be people who will be known for tolerating tolerating no may we confront for the truth of the gospel at the same time may we have the burden for souls gospel is powerful jesus christ has come to save sinners you put your faith in jesus you are saved you don't need to do anything extra other gospel said in galatian you have to do certain things paul is saying no i stand for the truth of the gospel faith in jesus is enough may god bless you all